Thanks for joining our Web 2.0 class. This is your instructor, Teresa Pelkey. So let's look at the arrival of Web 2.0. The early web was static and read-only. Static meaning that once a web page was loaded, it didn't change. Read-only means that you really couldn't do any writing on the pages. You pretty much just read the page. Web 2.0, on the other hand, is dynamic and interactive. Once the web page is loaded, it can change in response to a user action. It is commonly referred to as the read-write web because anyone can post information to the web. In order to see how we have emerged over the years, we need to look at the basics of the client-server technologies, and we need to understand synchronous communication. The client or browser makes a request to the server, and once that request is sent, the connection is closed. The server receives that request and then sends something, generally a web page, back to the browser. That is called synchronous communication. The connection is closed after the request and the browser must sit and wait until it receives the reply before it can continue any processing. With the event of server-sided processing, our applications became more powerful, but they were still synchronous. Some of the technologies that needed to be overcome, the synchronous communication, the browser waiting, the statelessness, meaning that the connection is closed after the request is made and after a response is sent, and the static pages, meaning that once a page was loaded, it could not be changed. These eventually were evolved so that we could have the Web 2.0 applications that we have today. So let's take a look at how this came about. JavaScript was first uh, launched in Netscape browser, and among its contributions were cookies that allowed us to carry information from page to page and to remember things for us. The Flash technology allowed changes in the web page after it had been loaded. And also, dynamic HTML allowed these same changes. So we have the beginning of interactivity and overcoming this concept of statelessness. Not only did we have enhanced client-sided scripting in the browser, but we could use that scripting now to talk to the server using a technology called AJAX. Asynchronous JavaScript and XML introduce the XML HTTP request object, which allowed us to access the server behind the scenes while the browser was continuing processing. So there was no loading and reloading of pages and having to wait for the server response. Although technically, that's what was happening. We didn't see this in the browser. Ajax is sometimes considered the poster child for the Web 2.0 applications because a lot of them use this technology.
So we have Ajax and Flash, which are considered rich internet applications, or RIAs, meaning that the web applications act similar to a desktop. There is no wait for changing. We can interact with the page. It remembers things easily. Okay, so how did Web 2.0 change things? Well, number one, web applications were easy to use. People could contribute. Anyone could post. Anyone could write. And because of this, it started changing about how we think about the web. The two most notable Web 2 applications are blogs and wikis. Here's what we have as a result freedom of expression, sharing of information, contribution to existing information, collaboration and participation, and a sense of community. So a new philosophy has arisen due to the ease of use of our Web 2.0 applications and the fact that anyone could now be a part of them. So let's take a look at blogs. Blogs essentially consist of posts People post information. Usually one person writes the blog. It belongs usually to one person. Visitors can comment. The posts are chronologically archived. It is these comments that actually generate a conversation and sometimes produce more information than the post itself. Wikis. Wikis are a special type of website that allows you to easily write and edit pages. Wikis are more suitable for a group of people that want, want to collaborate together and collectively write. And we have social networks, communities with similar interests where people interact with each other. These are the two, three main types of Web 2.0 applications that are the most popular today. So let's compare and contrast our webs. We went from read-only to the read-write web that anyone could use, where anyone could contribute. We went from a web where only the technically skilled could post to the web where anyone could create content and edit content and participate and contribute. We went from a web where we had static pages that did not change to a web that is so interactive and responsive. We went from a web that merely linked pages to a web that is now linking people and communities. We went from a web where the goal was to find information. Now we are using the web to share information, to collaborate, to express ourselves, and to connect with others.